Hi guys, it's Angie, and today I'm coming to do, um, well, I think it's going to be a tutorial, I guess, um, an encaustic tutorial, uh, tutorial with the encaustic wax. Now, you, uh, I have been on lives and I've been talking about encaustic wax the last couple of years, and so you guys have heard me, um, like I said, on other people's lives, and I actually did, um, a live, um, uh, with a couple of other ladies um, showing encaustic wax, but I've never really done one on my own channel. And um, like I said, I bring it back here and there, and I actually just do project shares, or like I say, go on live with other people and <laughs> show them a little bit about the wax process. Um, it's kind of a long, I don't know if it's going to be a lengthy video. I I'm not sure. Like I said, I've never really, um, I don't really dabble in tutorials. I kind of just, like I said, I do project shares and I show you, but. Um, the last couple um, things that I have done, I included wax in a couple um, mixed media projects. Um, what the last one I did was uh, Tracy Fox. I did a uh, Tim Holtz folio, and you saw me um, some tags and stuff in there that I had waxed. Um, and you loved how it, it got that shiny, glossy look. And uh, I've been having a lot of people ask me more and more how I do it. And it's really... Um, it's really on the wax. It's, um, there's different forms of wax that you can use. Um, there's like the Ranger wax, which is here, which, um, you know, this is a mixed media wax and you use it with the, the melting pot, um, which I don't believe they sell the melting pot anymore, but there's guidelines to everything. Um, there's rules and there's guidelines using the wax. You're not going to get that shiny look that I get because I use encaustic wax and this is just pure beeswax. So with this, you're going to get that translucent kind of look to it um, if you add tissue paper and, you know, whatnot. But it's a great it's a great start to getting into the wax. Um, but what I use is um, it's called encaustic wax, which is um, beeswax in, uh, melted um, mixed with Damar resin, which Damar, Damar resin comes from a tree. And I think it's the fir tree, but it comes in like little chunks of crystals. And you break those up and you add a ratio. Um, I think it's two to nine. Um, but what that does, the Damar, Damar resin gives the beeswax a higher melting uh, point and it's a harder wax. And you also achieve that, achieve that shine that everybody's been liking that I've been achieving. Um, I like to go into encaustics with a little bit of the history because... I've been doing it for a long time. Um, I kind of got out of it after I stopped photography for a while, but wax and photography is a big passion of mine, and I hope to um, incorporate that more. Um, I would like to get more back into my, you know, fine art photography and do the waxing like I used to. But on that note, um, so like I said, it's it's a wax and resin um, component, and um, it, was, it dates back all the way into the Egyptian era and the Roman era. They, they used it in different ways. The Egyptians used it to paint uh, portraits on top of the tombs. And just look back on the history of encaustics. It's amazing. It was brought back in the 50s. Um, it became popular again with, you know, several artists. And it's just, it's a beautiful medium. And I, I love it. But with this beautiful medium comes rules. And I'll go over those rules really quick with you. Um... I'm showing you my setup because it's a basic setup. You can get, you can get into a very ex expensive setup. My setup is pretty simple because it works for me. Um, if I had this huge studio with a big ventilation system and a big, big table, just for encaustics, I'd probably do this a different way. But this works, so there's nothing, no shame on, you know, a griddle and um, a cake pan, right? Um, so what you need to get started with is you need, uh, I um, use the Damar resin and then mine come in pellets just like how you've seen the Ranger comes in little tiny pellets and it's already mixed for you. Like I said, you can, I've never, I don't want to do the process of mixing the Damar and beeswax together. Um, it's a whole new process. I'm just not, I love R and F products and it's worked super fine for me. So that's kind of where I'm just, I'm keeping it. Um, so you'll need the wax and you're going to need a griddle and this is just a fiberware griddle that I got at Walmart I believe I think 
and you want a flat girdle and then you're gonna also this is the most important thing that I I, I can't stress enough you need a oven thermometer and the reason why you need an oven thermometer is because um let me see I need a pointer <laughs> I need a little pointer here Let's see. Let's just use this because this is funny right here. Okay, so you're gonna need one of these because this isn't a tr for. I don't know. Griddles aren't true to temperature, and it's proven right here on the oven thermometer. This is actually set on low, and this is actually almost 200 degrees, and um, that would probably read low to right here for 200, and that would cause smoking in your wax. That is too hot. So. You don't want to trust a griddle thermostat. You want to trust an oven thermostat, thermometer, because it's going to give you the truest reading. Because if you do not, you have to play nice with this wax because it can come back to haunt you. <laughs> um, if I were to raise this where it says about 200 degrees, this would start smoking. And I can't stress enough to let you know that encaustic wax is is can be dangerous and it can implode okay you don't you don't want you want to do your homework before you get encaustic and i hope most of you you do try this like i said maybe try the ranger wax and then get into this and that ranger wax also has limitations as well and it will tell you right here on the bottle to be super careful and don't melt it where to melt it at and don't overheat because it can be flammable in high temperatures and so if this starts smoking, like right now, I have a window open, and I usually have like this um, intake where it pulls the air this way and blows it out my window, but it's super loud. So I'm kind of breaking my own rule right now, and I just have the window and a little bit of airflow. But I do wear um, this as well because it is toxic. It may smell sweet and like honey, but it's still toxic, you guys. So you need to know that there are some precautions that you need to take. I mean, the best form would be an overhead ventilation system where it's sucking it right here up because I can feel it. I can feel the heat. And if you feel that heat, there are fumes rising. So you have to be careful. It's not just just because beeswax and resin is natural doesn't mean it can't be an irritant. So you have to be super careful with that. Um, let's see what else. So. Um, I'll probably wear this a little bit as I'm doing it, but I don't want to muffle my voice. So right now I'm kind of just have the window open. <clears throat> um, let's see, you need brushes. So this is a hang brush and it's natural bris bristles. So you want natural bris bristle brushes because if you use synthetic, what happens? It'll melt, right? Um, so you want... Um, I use a cake pan, and I, this is my uh, clear encaustic wax. Um, there, is, there are colored waxes and caustic bars that you can uh, get, and I'll show you one. Hold on, I should have had this all prepared. Um, <clears throat> so this is an encaustic bar of wax. Um, you can color your own wax with oil paints or powder pigments, but again, there's caution with that and powder pigments are highly toxic. So you need to be super careful if you're going to, you know, um, jump into that. I kind of just buy the colored wax already and I just put this pan on there and it melts down. Um, you want to make sure when you're done with your waxes that you cover them with like saran wrap because you don't want debris getting in your wax, right? Or in you can use pan pastels. I use oil pigment sticks, pan pastels. Um, you need carving tools if you want to carve into your wax. What I'm going to show you is super, super simple, the beginnings of encaustic. Um, I'm not going to get into how I do my carving yet or any of that because that will be a separate video. I'm just doing like the basic intro to encaustic um, just so you guys can get a feel for it. Um, you do need... A heating tool. I'm going to use this, but this is not what I usually use. I use a um, creme brulee torch, and you can use a bigger torch. Or I also have a, you know, uh, heating tool that you get from Lowe's or Home Depot that um, helps you remove paint, the really high heat one. But you want to get one that has a temperature regulation on the back. You can regulate the temperature. Um, some I have, I have a whole crate. I mean, I have a whole. Um, one of those three tier crates with all my encaustics. I have the flat iron, which is made for encaustics. Um, 
Uh, I'll maybe send a link to where you can get the iron that I have. Um, she's an acoustic artist here in Montana and she's amazing and she sells really cool iron. Um, you're going to need like lint free towels, gloves, you know, if you're going to get into the oil paints and that's about it. Like I just said, take, there's a ton. I mean, people are getting way into encaustics again. It's awesome to see, especially in the mixed media world. Um, I'm just going to show you really quick some, how I basically put my wax on and how I infuse it. And that's, that's about where we're going to go today. So this might be, I'm not trying to make this a lengthy video. So this is, um, this is a piece that I'm working on and it's going to have, um, a piece of material over it and I'm not going to embed the material. Um, so that's where these holes are at. So that's how I'm going to attach it. But this is a plastered, um, so you can, you need a substrate. You need a form of a substrate, which is a cradle board or, um, canvas. I wouldn't use canvas. I mean, you can, but you might need to use different kind of there. Like I said, there's different kinds of waxes. Um, encaustic wax might, it has, will have flex into it. So it'll, it will probably crack if you used a canvas. Um, this is just a, um, you know, canvas that I got at like, I don't know, Michael's or something. So I did my plaster and my book paper and then some more plaster and I sanded it and distressed it. And then I inked all the edges with the Tim Holtz ink. So it gives it kind of like that burnt edge. And I, um, you know, what's funny. What I used on here was coffee. I love the look of coffee stain. So I just sprayed it and dripped it down and then did some sand work to it and brought back, you know, some of the colors. And then, so I'm going to wax this. And another thing, I, I, I do design work for Tracy Fox, and that's Love Junk Journals by Tracy. And this is where you can find Tracy if you um, don't have her links. So I'm on her design team, so thank you so much, Tracy. So um, I want to do something with her tea cards, and I think I'm going to do, I'm not sure how I'm going to make these or what, but I wanted to make these like little, you know, like little wooden, I don't know if you call them tiles or not, <laughs> but so what I did is I took a piece of, um, basswood and I cut it to the size of the tea cards and then I inked them or first I stained them with walnut ink and then I distressed them with the Tim Holtz ink, right? So we're at that point. So I just took, like, here's the piece of basswood. And everybody has their different ratio of inks that they like to um, use. Um, if you go follow Michelle Scott, she has an awesome tutorial on how she inks her, um, let's see, I do it this way, how she inks hers. This is um, kind of how I go about mine. And she uses the round or the rectangle applicator I kind of use the round one I do use that other one too and I'm getting more <laughs> used to it uh, Michelle has some awesome tips on that so anyways this is kind of I'm just going to do this super quick and I'm going to show you and it might not look exact like that because I'm going to go pretty quick because I know people only have an attention span to watch so much right <laughs> maybe not I don't know you can put this on like fast forward if you want um, anyway, so I just kind of go over and I do more, like I said, I'm just showing you my basics with vintage photo. Then I go into ground espresso and then I kind of just follow it up like this. And like I said, I don't know how many tutorials I'm going to do. I just thought, you know, people have um, been, been asking me and wanting a video. I might go live and do it live so I could answer live questions. I have never gone live on my own channel yet. <laughs> Uh, I just use other people's channels, right? <laughs> Cause I'm new. No, I, I'm getting banned from the word new. It's become a joke, but it's still funny. So then I go into walnut, um, stain and I don't know why I go this way. It's just, just the way I like the look of it. You know, I kind of distressed and burnt and I like the little halo effect, but I don't like it to be too, too much of an oval. You know, I kind of go straight and, uh, so I do that. Then I finish off with um, black soot. And I kind of get the edges first. And then, and then I kind of just follow in on the corners only. 
And I kind of just take it and I do this. Hopefully I was in frame that whole time because if not, sorry guys. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I am new, right, to this at least. Uh, I don't even know what we're, where we're at on time. Um, so, there. And that's kind of my look, right? Um, so there you go. So it's pretty much the same. So then all I did was the same thing. I inked all the edges around there, you know, with the same lineup that I do. And then I end up with, you know, this. So then all I do is just take glue. I'm going to use, I just grabbed this really quick. You can use different glue if you want to, but this is what I'm going to use. So, hope everybody's having a good New Year's. Um, I've kind of had a, a rocky one a little bit, but it's getting better, you know. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to go in there with this. And I leave the, I don't distress the back. I just distress the front because you're going to see it around the edges a little bit. And then I take a, you know, form of a brayer and I kind of just smooth it on and make sure it's it's on there evenly one thing I didn't do on here which I'm gonna have to do really quick is I didn't sand the edges because I want it rounded off I'm gonna have to come back and ink those but that'll be quick so I ran these. I just thought this was a cool way, something different with Tracy's stuff. I'm a, I love mixed media. I love making like mixed media home decor, or, or I love taking pieces and totally doing something different with it. Even though you know it's nothing wrong with you know using everything in junk journals, but that's just who I am as an artist. I love taking stuff and just doing different things with it. So I thought this would be a lot of fun to. Um, do something different with her tea cards right and you can use them as a book play you know I don't you can use it on a mixed media piece like this is a piece of you know something that I was experimenting with but I'm gonna melt this back down um, I mean you could see these are the finished pieces that we're going to do so this is already waxed so I mean you could I'm gonna maybe do something with this with the owls I'm gonna do like a mixed media piece and add some things to it so you can add the wax. Like I said, you can use these as book plates in your journals. Um, you can put a hole here and have them in a keychain. I use so many things that you can do with the wood pieces. Um, this one I put a glaze over it, which you know I don't know what I like. I I like this, but I love the way encaustic um, just adds that murkiness, but yet a shine. But I do love this. Um, so here's another idea. And then this one's going to also be a piece, an art piece. Um, so I took her tea card and I cut an oval uh, glaze in there. And then so, um, so that's going to be something. So that's going to be my next DT project. So, okay. I hope I'm still recording. Okay, so we're now we're going to get into the encaustic part. Um, let me, so you're going to also need a nonstick mat for your projects because... This will stick. All right. And it gets hot. <laughs> so you're going to start feeling the temperature rise in your room as well. Okay. So, um, I'm going to try to get this. You warm your brushes. Oh, one thing you want to do before you start is you want to warm up your piece. So, like I said, I'm just using tools that I know most people have or can get easily. Like I said, I use a torch. The torch is probably the best bet to get the best look um, because it just adds an even shine. You want to be careful when you're using a heat gun because that will push your wax. And that's why people use torches because you don't get that, that push from the air. So you just want to warm up your board because then your wax will lay on a little bit better. You got to be careful. You don't burn yourself. Um, you do want to keep water next to your ice, a uh, bowl of ice or um, fire extinguisher. <laughs> so anyway, just dip your wax in here, and so let's see here. 
And you got to remember, everything is hot, you guys. Everything. So don't go ahead and touch that because you get burned. Um, let's see here. I'm going to move this really quick. Okay. <clears throat> so here's my, you know, and I have brushes dedicated to um, just the clear wax. And if you use brushes for color, um, a way you clean the color off is use paraffin wax. You melt the paraffin wax down and you clean your brushes, get the color out of it that way. If you decide you, you're wondering, well, if I want to use color, how am I going to clean it? Because you don't want to use brush that you dipped in white and then bring it here because then that's going to ruin your wax right and you want these little things to move your pan around I just use these little clippy things they're super cheap so I'm you know always aware that don't touch um, the wax <laughs> so you're going to start one way so I start this way I just glide down okay and then I turn it this way so I can get the other side. So vertical or horizontal, whichever way, because the next one you're going to go the opposite direction. Okay. So there's my first layer. So every layer that you do, you need to fuse, you need to fuse it. Because that embeds it into the first layers. Every layer is embedded into each other. So you want to take it to your like kissing it to just where it turns like it's melted, like it's wet. Okay. And I'm not going to add a lot of layers on this because um, cause I want it thin because it's going to go in a frame, a mixed media frame. So um, so there you go. There you went that way. So we went vertical. Now we're going to go horizontal in the next pass. Like I'm only going to do two passes because I just wanted this to be... Um, thin. So you're going to set your work down. Be careful if everything's hot, remember. And you're going to go ahead and fuse it. And like what I said about using these guns is if you get too close, you're going to push the wax. And if you if you get to where you really love this and you're going to add um, color and you're going to carve into it and you make a design, you don't want to uh, push your design back out. You know, like if I were to scrape in here and then add some oil paints you don't want to take your gun and directly put it over it because all it's going to do is disperse it okay so um so that's done and i'm just going to let this dry for a while and then i'm going to come back later on and uh, i'll show you in a later video or pictures where it's high shine okay and so same with these little guys um i don't have my little tweezers which are right here so i'll go ahead and use this Sometimes I'll just hold it like this because, like I said, this wax is hot, you guys. Just going to do one pass over. Okay. And that's it, right? Then you're going to take your, your heat gun. You're going to fuse it. so where it becomes shiny. See? Turn that off. Take it back. Do the next second pass over opposite direction. Use it. And that's it, you guys. So that's where we're at with these pieces. Um, I'm going to let this other one dry a little bit and then I'm going to polish. And all you do is you can either take a pantyhoe or <laughs> pantyhose, rip a piece off, and buff it. You can take the palm of your hand and buff it, and it becomes that high shine that you guys like so much. Like this one. Um, you can see it right there, how it's shiny and murky. I love that effect on this. So thank you, Tracy. These are awesome little tea cards. I'm, um, so I'll have a DT out soon um, at the end, but right now it's kind of a DT, um, just altering your tea cards. So, um, so here's a fun way to do something different with, with Tracy's digi kits. Anyways, all right, ladies and gents, I will uh, talk to you later. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, like I said, it's my very first real 
probably really long tutorial on intro to encaustic wax. I hope everybody gives it a try. Please go do your homework. You know, I'm not an expert by any means. There's a ton of videos and um, I have taken classes um, throughout the years on waxing. So I'm pretty good at the basics. Um, like I said, I'm not. Shauna Moore is one person that I, I totally adore and follow. I've taken her classes and a few others, but um, please give this a try. Don't be scared of it. You can do it with basic tools. And I said you can start off with Ranger beeswax and then get, you know, follow up into more of the encaustic wax. Um, it's a lot of fun to do and see how this one is drying. And then after it's kind of cured, I will um, go ahead and buff it. The only other thing is after you're done with your piece, don't um, keep it in pure sunlight or um, over a fireplace because you know if it gets over 200 degrees the wax will melt so you don't want to keep it in pure sunlight where it's the beam of sun coming in right just common sense it's everything is just pretty much common sense with wax just respect it use it um, respectfully and you are going to create some amazing some amazing artwork and um, yeah I guess that's it so like I said the sky's the limit you can dip anything you want in wax uh, material, uh, lace. I mean, I'm going to do a lot of, I'm going to try to do some of that more with lace and, and whatnot. But anyways, all right, guys, this video has been long enough. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.